Mr. Rabbit here, time for another uh, boring activity explanation. This is lab number 41, which is the rock classification lab. Honestly, this is one of the three most important labs we do all year. Um, on the front, um, you definitely want to record the observable characteristics uh, that you should be looking for while you're doing this activity. Um, you know, we'll go through it. There's the list. Starting with sample number one. This was sample A1 and you should notice that it has a real shiny sheen to it. That's usually an indication that you might have some foliation due to metamorphism. So when you're looking at this, you can actually see the individual mica crystals. Okay, this is actually a chlorate mica schist. So if you're looking at it, this definitely is foliation. So you should have classified rock one as metamorphic, your reason was probably foliation. And as I said before, this is schist, S-C-H-S-I-S-T, but this is a chlorate mica schist. Sample A2. When you looked at sample A2, you should have seen that there were different mineral crystals. They were large, they were visible, they were intergrown. So this is a coarse-grained igneous rock for sample A2. You definitely see there's weathered surfaces over here. You don't really see the mineral, but on this side, you can clearly see the random intergrown crystals. A2 was igneous, and the rock is granite. A3 looked like this. Okay, you probably want to use a process of elimination. There's no crystals, there's no banding, there's no foliation. Um, it's not a glassy texture, it's not vesicular. One thing you would notice is if you take this and scratch it, you're going to get particles of sand coming off of the sample. You can feel it. So A3 is a clastic sedimentary rock. It has sand or fragments cemented together and A3 was sandstone. A4. Now, once again, you're seeing that shine to the surface of this. This rock has a ton of biotite mica in it, but all the biotite is flat. Okay, that's a sign of metamorphism and foliation. You really don't see banding, but you see large visible mica crystals all across the surface. So this, a rock four, is metamorphic. It's schist. There were two samples for five. Okay, both samples look pretty similar. It's random intergrown crystals, okay, or intergrown crystals ev evenly distributed. It's definitely large random intergrown crystals. So this is igneous, and it's the rock granite for A5. A6, you hope to get this on the lab practical. There are tons of fossils scattered throughout the sample. These happen to be brachiopods. I believe they're mucrospurifers. If you look on the bottom of your reference table, you'll see them on the chart for geologic history. You don't have to know that, but you should see these are fossils. So it's sedimentary, and this is the sedimentary rock shale. A7. Okay, this has crystals, but they are not randomly arranged. You look at this rock and it almost looks zebra striped. Okay, there's alternating light and dark mineral bands. It doesn't go continuously throughout the sample. So seven is metamorphic. It's the rock Nice, G-N-E-I-S-S. -S. Okay, eight. This sample used to be better. Higher surface was covered with fossilized leaves. Students picked off all the leaves. Um, but if you look at this from the side, you can definitely see the layers of sediment. So rock A8 was sedimentary. You scratch it with your fingernail and you see all sorts of really fine grain sediment come off of this. It's got a little bit of gritty texture to it, 
A8 should have been siltstone. A9, okay, another sedimentary rock with layers. This one's nice because it's got a cut polished surface, but if you look at what you would probably see in the field or in the outcrop, you see the horizontal layers, not of minerals, but of particles. Okay, so A9 is a variety of shale. A10, looking at A10, okay, you'll see there are different minerals. These are darker and more mafic, but it's random intergrown crystals. It's an igneous rock. A10 is the rock Gabbro. A11. Okay, somebody wrote on rock A11. That's all right. You can clearly see there's different minerals, lighter, more felsic minerals, darker, more mafic minerals. This is high-grade metamorphism. It's banding. A11 is the rock nice. Nothing else looks like this. This is rock A12. It's black volcanic glass, so it's got a glassy texture. A12 is the rock obsidian. A13, if you look at the back of the rock, you don't see much. It just looks dark. But when you look at this surface, the entire surface is covered with fern fossils. So rock A13 has to be sedimentary. It contains a fossil. And A13 is black shale. 14. Okay, this came from Hawaii. Okay, you look at it, it's got a vesicular texture. Since it's a vesicular texture, it's got to be igneous. This happens to be the rock scoria, which is an extrusive igneous rock. Looking at A15, much larger sample. Be careful, you don't want to cut yourself. Okay, this definitely has a vesicular texture. This is more felsic in composition. Okay, this rock would float because it's got so many gas pockets trapped in it. Um, but glassy texture, vesicular texture, it's the rock pumice for A15. A16, I see crystals. I have to ask myself, are those randomly arranged or are they foliated? They're visible, so they're coarse grained. They're between 1 and 10 millimeters. A16 is going to be an igneous rock because of random intergrown crystals. It's going to be the rock granite. A17. All right, now I'm looking at the surface of this rock. I'm seeing there's all sorts of dark biotite mica crystals. So this is definitely a foliated texture where the minerals are lined up. You see the entire surface of this is covered with dark mica crystals. So I would probably say foliation, okay, metamorphic. You could maybe go with banding if you look at the sides and you see a little bit of alternating light and dark. So for A17, um, we'll go with metamorphic foliation and it's, you know, somewhere between schist and nice. Uh, either one would be all right. A18, more samples from Hawaii. This I collected on a beach from Kauai. You can see it was rounded in the waves, but it's definitely vesicular texture with all the gas pockets, and it's the definitely an igneous rock because of vesicular texture. 18 was scoria. 19 is a rock that Mr. Brideson grabbed. Okay, this is up by his home in Vermont. Um, but when you look at this, it's clearly a metamorphic rock. This is mica, but it's muscovite mica, and the whole surface is covered with these minerals that are flat in the same direction. If you looked at the side and called it banding, we would accept that. 
Uh, but this is a piece of schist. It's metamorphic. It's got a foliated texture or banding. 20 is another sedimentary rock. This also, you can see from the appearance, was rounded by running water, but you'll see that there's pebbles and other fragments cemented together, okay, in sand. This is a rounded pebble, so A20 is sedimentary rock. It's got rounded, unsorted sediments. A20 is going to be the rock conglomerate. A21 clearly is a sedimentary rock because right there you are looking at the head of the New York State fossil. That's called a Eurypterus, if you look at the front page of the reference table. So because it contains a fossil, it's sedimentary. Here's a larger model of what the Eurypterus looked like if you're lucky enough to find a entire sample of a Eurypterid, or actually worth a decent amount of money, but you see the eyes up top are these two little bumps coming out of the surface. You can definitely also see a little bit of layers that are deposited along the side of the sample. So for this one, A21 sedimentary contains a fossil and it's probably siltstone. A22 Okay, you'll see right in the surface, you've got fern fossils. So A22 is sedimentary, contains fossils. That's showing you a terrestrial environment, um, but this is black shale. 23, really like this rock. You'll notice that there's a shiny surface, but you don't see the individual minerals. It almost looks like the surface of this is wavy. So if you look for the description of the metamorphic rock phyllite, it says microscopic microcrystals and the foliation surfaces are shiny. Along the edge, you can see what was originally horizontal layers are now all crumpled and bent. So 23 is a metamorphic rock. You could either say foliation or you could say distorted structure, but 23 is the metamorphic rock phyllite. 24, another igneous sample with a vesicular texture. This one happens to be vesicular basalt. It's a mafic igneous rock. 25, okay, clearly you have fragments or particles cemented together. But in this sample, A25, you'll notice that the larger sediments are definitely angular. Since it's angular, this would be a brescia or a breccia, depending on how you want to pronounce it. A26, wow, these are really coarse-grained intergrown crystals. You have the darker, more mafic crystals. You have the lighter felsic crystals, the quartz and the feldspar. This is definitely randomly arranged. It's an igneous rock because of random intergrown crystals. And 26 was definitely pegmatite. 27, okay, this was collected along the north shore of Long Island. Okay, you see rounded rock fragments. They're cemented together with iron, honestly. This is quite dense. So 27 is sedimentary. Um, it has fragments cemented together. It's the sedimentary rock conglomerate. 28, last sample. You see that shininess or the sheen from the mica crystals all being aligned along the top surface. Okay, this is a metamorphic rock that shows foliation, so 28 should be the rock schist. I hope this reviewed these for you and that you've, you know all the characteristics to look for with identifying rocks. Good luck.